scripture and our prayer. Good morning. We got a right. Amen. I'm coming to you this morning from Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6, starting at verse 31. It says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But seek ye first to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is evil thereof. I have read to you Matthew 6, 31 through 34. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy and precious word. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone, and happy holidays. I stand before you to lift up the Lord's name in prayer. One of our most powerful weapons as a Christian is to pray and talk to God every single day. We should give reverence and, and, and lift our hearts up to him. Father God, as I stand before you today, Father God, I thank you, Father God. Lord, you have so fit. I'm full right now. You have so fit, Father God, for everyone to under the sound of my voice to see 365 days in the year of 2023. There are so many, Father God, so many loved ones so many of our members that has gone on before us, Father God. And I pray for those families that has lost loved ones, those bereaving families, our own Sister Mitchell, Father God. We lift her up in prayer, Father God. Father God, there are so many that's laying in the hospitals, Father God. Father God, but you saw fit. You saw fit, your love, Father God, your new mercies. Lord, you have so much that you give us, Father God, and we take it for granted. I'm so grateful to be standing here. Father God, through everything that we go through, we can just call on you no matter what it is. No matter how hard the situation, no matter the problem, no matter the circumstances, no matter. Just put Jesus. Let him be your everything, the great I am. And you put what you want to put in the great I am. Because God provides through sickness, God provides through financial difficulties. God provides through relationships. God knows how to restore us and bring us back. I lift up prayer for our own sister Renee Delaney. I pray for her because I know her heart is heavy. I lift her and her family up to you, Lord Jesus. And there are so many others. I don't want to start calling out names. But Father God, you know who they are, Father God. Father God, I pray for our war-torn country. Father God, we say that we in a country that there is not war, but we fight against principalities. Father God, there is war in our own country, in our own streets, Father God. Let's pray for our young people. We have so many people that are lost, Father God. They don't know who to turn to. And it is our responsibility, Father God, as Christians, to let our light shine before them so that they can see the good works, Father God so that they would know who to turn to, Father God, in these most evil and difficult times. Father God, I just thank you for this day because that's all we have. I pray, Father God, for our pastor in his absence and our first lady continue to strengthen. We know they've been through a struggle just like everybody else in 2023, but Lord, you brought them through it, Father God, and I'm so grateful. That's why I know prayer is power. We have to continue to pray for one another, Father God. I pray for the ministers that's here on the roster, Father God. I pray for our seniors, Father God. I lift sister, 
Lenora Bean up to you, Sister David, and all our seniors, Father God. We start calling our name and we miss some, Father God. I pray for the choir, Father God, that's singing to us, Father God, from their heart, Father God. Lord, I just thank you, Father God, for my family, for my children, Father God. I thank you for my husband, Father God. Father God, I'm just so grateful, Father God. So, so grateful, Father God. On yesterday, we celebrated 47 years as a couple. And Father God, I'm so grateful, Father God. So, so grateful. Father God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Father God, for all the things that you have planned for us in front of us, Father God. We don't know what it is, Father God, but all we got to do is submit, surrender, be obedient, and trust who you are, Father God, and everything will be okay. There are so many people that said 2023 was a hard year, Father God, but try 2023 without Jesus, and we can see how hard it would be. So I'm so thankful, Father God, that you was in the midst of us, and you kept us, Father God. You strengthened us. Lord, thank you for our young people here at New Hope Baptist Church, Father God. Let's wrap our arms around our young people. Show them some love, Father God. Show them some guidance, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for Brother Chris. I saw him this morning. And I just ran and gave him a hug. We're so glad to see him, Father God. Just keep reaching out to our young people so they can come running back. What must I do? to make life better for myself. Father God, you are so awesome. You're so good. I just thank you, Father God. Lord, I have prayed this prayer. Father God, I'm asking that you just, each and every one that's under the sound of my voice will learn how to lean and depend on you, to talk to you for everything, and just the reassurance that everything will be okay with Jesus on our side. Thank God and amen. Now we'll make way for our announcements and welcome. Welcome in the announcements. Amen. Good morning, New Hope. Got my usher hat on today. Uh, first, giving honor to God and respect to Pastor Carter in his absence and to Sister Carter, to all the other ministers in the pulpit, to the deacons and deaconesses. We want you to know that you're welcome here. If anyone is here for the first time, or if you've been away for a while, we just want you to know that we love you. We're glad that you joined us today, and we hope today is a blessing. Uh, something is said or done that would make you want to come back to New Hope. And if you're looking for a church home, please consider New Hope. As you can see, there's a lot of love in this, in this church, and the word is preached. Thank you, and God bless you. Amen. So I'm back with your announcements. And we have an announcement from the Sunday School Department. The Sunday School Department will have a combined Sunday School class on next Sunday, January 7th, at 9.15 with our own Pastor Carter as our Sunday school teacher. Please join us. There will be a breakfast will be served after Sunday school. And this announcement is very important. The Sunday school department is looking for support for our Black History Program. For more information, please contact Deaconess Sandra Boone. That will be me. So I'm looking for everybody to come out to support the Black History Program. And watch service will be tonight at 10 p.m. Sister Elise has an announcement. Thank you and have a blessed day. Good afternoon, church. Well, it's still morning, but uh, protocol has been established. I'm here on behalf of our great WMU women's. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the WMU. Uh, 
um, on our um, great president, Deaconess Joy Bryant, and the um, seasonal committee. I want to thank each and every one of you for your participation this year in our poinsettia drive. Last year we did 60 poinsettias. We overdid ourselves this year. We did 67 poinsettias. <laughs> Without your help, this would not have been possible. So we want to thank each and every one of you. In the meantime, we'd like for you to pick up the poinsettias at the end of our service. <laughs> we want you to take them home and nourish them and take care of them. But it, it was a pleasure. And God bless you. And uh, hopefully we can do this again next year. Thank you, one each, and one, each one of you all. Thank you very much. Amen.
grateful. I'm grateful. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm so grateful. 365 days. I'm grateful, Lord. Have me to see another day, Lord. I'm grateful. Thank you, Lord. It's prayer time. There's so many that are not here today. Some of the soldiers are going home. Others are still here. And we're grateful, Lord. There's a lot on our prayer list today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Before uh, Reverend Boone pray, prays, uh, I want to mention a couple of things. By the way, I'm, I'm not late because I overslept. <laughs> I've been at the master's feet. <laughs> so we are. I want to um, mention the funeral for Crystal Cunningham. Crystal Cunningham was once a member here. Um, um, man, good people, good people. We're praying for her, her husband. We're praying for her family. Her funeral is going to be on January the 8th at 11 a.m. at Progressive, Ma uh, Progressive Baptist Church in Modesto, California. Um, she, she asked for me to do her eulogy. So um, I and Sister Carter will be going up, and if anyone else desires to go, um, they, they certainly would appreciate your support. And then we're praying for the family of Fran, I Fran Aiello, Fran Lacido. Uh, she passed away. She's a close friend. Her mother, she's the mother of a close friend of Laura Smith. Forgive me, I'm trying to get it together because I, I wrote these notes down. But anyway, so we want to keep those families in prayer. Reverend Boone's going to come and lead us. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus. We come to you with humility and humbleness, Father. Father, you seem fit once again to have us to see another day. And Father, this is the day that you have made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yesterday is gone, Father. And today is another day. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your kindness, Father. We thank you for your love, Father, because you first loved us. And Father, you seem fit to have us to see this day, which is another day in our lives, Father. And we thank you. We thank you for those who stand flat-footed in your word, Father. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word strengthens us, Father. It keeps us. It guides us, Father. Father, there's just so many reasons to thank you today. And Father, we, we give you honor, praise, and glory because you deserve each and every moment, each and every minute, each and every second Father, you deserve our praise. We thank you, Father. Father, as we laid down last night in our slumber, we had no idea that we would wake up this morning. But it's by your grace and mercy that you brought us here into your house of worship, Father. And we thank you. Father, through each and every family that's represented here and those who own live stream, Father, we all have our own 
Thank you. 2023, Father. And you've brought us to the end of it. The road was rough sometime, Father. But you brought us through it. Things didn't seem like they should have been, Father. But you brought us through it. The pain that was in our bodies, Father. You're bringing us through it. And Father, we hope that as we go into the next year and continue to praise your name, Father, that you would continue to rain down on us your grace and your mercy, Father. Father, we love you. We need you and we can't do without you. But most of all, Father, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus, our Lord and Savior, our hope, our new day, our night, our health and our strength, our guiding light, Father. Father, we thank you for Jesus. Father, we've learned to understand that without Jesus, there is no us. Father, we love and we need you, and we can't do without you. And as we continue to go into this service, there are people, their names weren't called, but you know who they are, Father. Father, you know whose they are, and we ask that you keep them. Bereaved families, behind prison walls, Father, sick and shut in. We love you, Father, and we need you right now. And as we continue this service, Father, we ask that you be with us in spirit. And God, this service is the way you would have it to be, Father. In Jesus' name we do pray. And the church says, Amen. 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 It's giving time. Yeah, 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 yeah. All those presents. Take them back, get the money in give it to God. Yeah, it's, uh, it's given time. Father God has set aside uh, a moment for us to dig deep in our pockets to give back to the Lord. Uh, he's just asking for a portion that we that he has given us. A couple ways we can give to the Father God, if I might read it. It says NHBC is now accepting um, online mobile tithings and offerings. The address is whbcseaside.com, uh, P.O. Box 834, Seaside, California, 93955. Website is www.giblify.com. As the ushers make their way, I see we should be in our purses and in our wallets. Giving back to the Lord. Yes. Heavenly Father, to some the year has been long, to some the year has been short. One thing that is certain, Father, you weren't short on helping us pay our bills. You weren't short on getting us to point A to point B. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done to us in this hour monetarily, Father. And we pray thee, Lord, that as we dig deep to give back to you a portion of what you've given us, we pray, Father, that it would be sufficient. We pray, Father, for those that wanted to give spiritually but weren't able to give. Accept their empty plate, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
blessing not pass over them but hit them first in jesus name i pray father not my name in jesus christ's name i pray lord amen
Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we are glad you have done great things. You've been good to us, better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. We have sung, we have prayed, we've clapped shouted we have been on the mountaintop but to, to last in the valley we need a word <laughs> you've given me a word to declare to this people that as we close out this year we must be mindful how we move in the new year. Have your way now. Bless your word, bless your people, bless your preacher. Be any that don't know you in the pardon of your sin, their sins. We prayed someone would come crying, what must I do to be saved? Have your way now. In Jesus' name we pray that the church say amen. amen. From the gospel according to Matthew chapter six, verse 33. You have to know if the Lord gave me this text, no matter how loud we sing, that the text applies to us today, here and now, and that if he gave me this text, and obviously that there are things that are going on that we aren't doing that he would have us to do. From the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. God's not allowing us to slip out of 2023 and slide into 2024. God's not allowing us to walk and carry our same baggage in 2023 into 2024. And no matter how loud we sing, singing won't remove the baggage. From Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. May the Lord bless his word. You may be seated in the sanctuary. Our theme this morning is don't put off for tomorrow what you should do today. This, this, this is a two-part sermon. This is a two-part sermon. Uh, we're starting this morning, and we're going to close out with verse 34 tonight. Don't put off for tomorrow what you should do today. We, we boarded flight 2023 back in January. Let me say it again. Then some folk were asleep when we got on the flight. <laughs> we boarded flight 2023 back in January. Some who boarded in January were transitioned along the way. The Lord called them from earth to glory. There's been a lot of turbulence. I said there's been a lot of turbulence. All right. All right. I said there's been a lot of turbulence on this flight along the way. There's been a lot of shaking, rocking along the way, but God kept us. How many know you're not sitting here because you've been so good? I mean, you ain't sitting here because you all that in a bag of chips. But for the grace and mercy of God, go you, me, and everybody. There's been a lot of turbulence on this flight, a lot of shaking 
and rocking along the way. But God kept us all the way to December. You ought to bless the Lord. And the question is, what have you learned along the way? What have you learned on flight 223 from January to December? What have you learned about yourself along the way? Did the turbulence shake you to look at yourself instead of looking at everybody else? Did the turbulence shake you to do an honest assessment of your life while you're being so nosy up in other people's All right. All right. All right. Did you give God your best? Did you give God your best effort? Could you have done better? Could you have studied more? Could you have served more? Yes. Could you have served better? Yes. Could you have been more loving, yes. more kind, yes. more gentle? Yes. These are questions we need to ask ourselves. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, these are questions we need to ask ourselves before this flight lands in 2024. We need to understand our assignment. I'm talking about the church. Jesus says our assignment, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The following verse is one of my favorite passages of scripture along with our text, the following verse, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, one of my wife's favorite texts. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. God says this to Israel, but, but Israel didn't pay attention. God says to Israel in Jeremiah 29, verse 13, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart. Obviously, Israel has yet to heed that command. Uh, Jesus says in Luke 9, 23, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, let her deny herself, take up his cross daily and follow me. The, the, the reoccurring theme in all of these verses, including our text, is to trust and seek God with your whole heart right now, today, immediately, to not procrastinate, to not hesitate, to not show up late, to not put off for tomorrow what you should do today, but seize the day, not tomorrow, seize today and be urgent to take every opportunity to walk close to God. We are living in a dark and evil world. We are living in a dark and evil time that the only way we can navigate through this darkness is to walk in the light. This walk now, this walk, this journey has to be a lifestyle walk. In other words, you just can't talk about it. You got to be about it. And we have too many talkers in the church. Too many talker, talkers, not enough walkers. Oh, yeah, don't be mad at me. God gave me this. This walk, this journey has to be a lifestyle walk. In other words, we have to live what we say we believe. This walk will eventually end up in the place that Jesus says in John 14 and 2 that he has prepared a place for us. But in the meantime, the attitude and character we must display in the process is to keep our eyes on Jesus. The key to our witness, the key to our testimony is to walk close to God. Yes, sir. Yes. Our walk with God can be from a distance. Mm -hmm. Too many Church folk are trying to follow God from a distance. There's folks sitting in the room right now who has never been to a Bible study. Folks sitting in a church right now has never been to a Sunday school. Been in church for years. 
will clap when the choir sing like everybody else, but don't really understand what you're clapping about if you haven't been to no studies to understand what you're clapping about. Listen to me. I don't need y'all to clap for the Lord because I know the Lord has been good to me based on what I've studied for myself. Can't be from a distance, but this walk must be up close and personal. And the best way to walk close to God is to keep the light of God turned on in our own life. Psalms 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, but too many church folk try to get around God's word and think that God is just going to just pour it in by osmosis. He says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 1 John 1 and 5 says, this then is the message which we have heard. This then is the word which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Listen, in order to follow the light, in order to walk in the light, we have to stay focused on the light source. And how we manage that is by embracing the word of God. The word of God is the key to keeping the light shining in a dark world. This is how it happens. Jesus, speaking to his disciples, says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But wait a minute, wait a minute, preacher. Haven't I been seeking first the kingdom of God? You answer that. You answer that. Because from a pastoral standpoint, I know a whole lot of us haven't been seeking him first. All right, all right. Say it, say it. What things is Jesus saying shall be added? Well, he mentions those things, if you read Matthew chapter 6 from verse 25 to 32, those things that are a necessity for life, such as food and drink and clothing. We need those things. Yes, sir. Jesus says those are things the world worries about. First, note this, that Jesus is not saying these things are not needed and necessary. Jesus acknowledges these things are needed and necessary for life. We need food. We need water. We need clothing. Jesus says these things are important. But the most important thing in life we need is to see God first. How many know that if you seek God, God will bless you with everything you need? Maybe I'll say something that you won't clap so weak on. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's what happens when you seek him first. God made us, and he certainly knows what we need to be sustained by. God knows we need shelter. Yes. God knows we need financial resources. Yes. God, ne- Listen, Sister Carter and I, we have never had a want for anything when we first put God first. Yes. We have never had a need. Listen, we haven't never had to borrow nothing. We ain't had to steal nothing. We ain't had to fake our... Listen, we didn't have to trick our taxes to get it. God has blessed us with everything we need because we put him first. Well, wait a minute, preacher. Wait a minute, preacher. Because there's some folk ain't following God and they have all those things. They have all those things, but they don't have God. When you got a God on your side, if you don't have none of that, God will still supply your needs. He knows what we need. He knows we need shelter and financial resources, a job, and he knows we need an education. He knows we need a prayer. He knows what we need. He, listen, he knows the light bill needs to be paid. Because he gave you the bill. <laughs> because he gave you the lights. Because he gave you the roof over your head. He knows the light bill needs to be paid. He knows the baby needs Similac. He knows you need new tires on your car because your tires are worn out. He knows what you need. 
He knows what you need. He knew it even before the foundation of the world. How many know he knows what you need? But Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Jesus says, we need God first. Jesus says, put God first. And the problem most people have is we try to do things opposite of God would have us to do. Matthew 6 describes to us two different parallel worlds. In one world, people are trying to manage their own lives based on what they think is priority. Most people, listen to me, most people only desire to lean on their own understanding. That's the way of the world. That's why there's so much homelessness. Oh, say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. That's why there's so much homelessness, because there's a lot of folk that try to do it their own way. Not everybody, but a lot of folk try to do it their own way and ended up in a situation because they didn't trust God. That's why there's so much crime. That's why there's so much drug addiction and so much alcoholism, because folk won't trust God. And then you want to give the credit to 12 steps instead of giving it to God when he bring you out. I know I'm preaching in here. So most people want to lean on their own understanding. But for those of us who trust God, Jesus says we're to trust God in his wisdom to lead us through this life's journey and that he will provide whatever we need along the way. Yeah. Now keep in mind, now God understands that there's things that happen in our life that catch us off guard. Right. Things that happen in our life that come from out of nowhere. Sickness, loss of a loved one, losing a job, losing your house, losing. There's things that happen in our life that catch us off guard. But don't you know with your silly self that it didn't catch God off guard? That's the God I trust in. That he's my, listen, when it catches me off guard, he's my on guard God. You have a witness in here. And so, and so, and so most people's priority is to chase after the things of the world because people want first, watch this now, People want first not only the things that are needed and necessary, but many want also the things that are not necessary. Are we just a greedy people? Yes. Who would, listen, 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 admit the fact. How many will admit the fact you got too many shoes? How many will admit the fact you got too much clothes? How? Come on now, come on now, because my wife been bumping into you down at Macy's and at Target. I, I said my wife been bumping into you here and there. How many will admit we got too much stuff? He not only blesses us with what we need, he blesses us with what we want. Many want also the things that are not necessary. And the problem is that oftentimes many people don't know the difference between what's needed and what's not. But Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Jesus said, put God first. Proverbs 3, 6 says, I quoted, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Jesus says, first and foremost, seek the kingdom of God. Jesus says, seek God first. When we allow God, watch this, when we allow God to have first place in our hearts, God's kingdom then takes up permanent residence, ruling us from the inside out. When God, watch this, when God is the main focus, his will becomes our desire. And our desire should be to promote the kingdom, yes. not ourselves. Amen. So Jesus said, not only seek first the kingdom of God, but also seek his righteousness. Yes. 
How many know you can't have one without the other? Note now, note now, we are to seek his righteousness, not our own righteousness. Our righteousness is unholy. Yeah, see, some of y'all think y'all, some of y'all really think y'all all are all, all that. Some, our righteousness is unholy. Our righteousness is selfish, has selfish motives. In fact, our righteousness isn't righteous at all. That's what the Bible says. Isaiah 60, verse 6 says, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. We just low down, dirty nobodies that God made somebody because of the grace and mercy and righteousness of God. We are here today. You ought to bless his name. Y'all ain't mad at me. Go ahead and bless him like you mean it. Because y'all y'all acting like you're mad at me. You need to listen. Don't be mad at me. I'm just the mailman. Well, you thought you were going to just slide out of this year and slide into the new. By the, by the righteousness of God, through Christ and Jesus, we are able to gain access into the presence of God. Somebody came here just wanting to hear the choir sing. Right. Right. Oh, boy, you, well, please come back. <laughs> Listen, by the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, we are able to gain access into the presence of God. Yes, but with our righteousness, access is denied. Yeah. With our righteousness, access is impossible. Yeah. Without the righteousness of God, it's impossible to enter the kingdom of heaven. And if you're a member of the kingdom of heaven, you need to bless God right now. I'm going to put you on the spot. You're a member of the kingdom. You need to stand on your feet and bless him like you really mean it. This is, this is no small, listen to me, listen to me. This is no small thing what the Lord has done for us. And you need to bless his name. Thank God for the righteousness of God through his son. Thank God for Jesus. First John chapter 2 verse 1 says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. The I said, thank God for Jesus. Jesus Christ, the righteous. So, 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 now everything, this is part one. Everything, everything Jesus says in Matthew 6 was before he went to the cross. If you're going to seek the kingdom of God, you have to start with Jesus. If you're going to seek the kingdom of God, it begins with Jesus. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not Confucius. Not mama, daddy, your peppy. It starts with Jesus. Jesus is the bridge. I said Jesus is the bridge between God's righteousness and our unrighteousness. And you ought to bless his name. And so because of Jesus, our sins are not only forgiven, but they're forgotten. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. I said our sins are not only forgiven, but they're forgotten. Listen to me. Past sin, present sin, future sins are forgiven and forgotten because of what Christ did for us. Jesus settles the matter. He settles the matter concerning our eternal destiny. And we are now the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. I just want to take a little moment here. Uh, uh, the scripture says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If that ain't you, if that ain't you, you can be. But if that ain't you, I, I, I'm talking to the redeemed. His word also says, oh, magnify. I said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Who here 
want to thank God for flight 2023. Who here want to thank him for keeping you going from January through February, through March and April and May and June, all the way to the city. Who here want to thank the Lord for flight 2023 with all of his turbulence? Because of Jesus. We boarded this flight in January. The Lord called some home along the way, but he still allowed us to be here. Not so we can take up space, but so that we can serve him, worship him, and bless his name. And if you had a problem doing it yesterday, this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Why don't you bless him today for waking you up this morning, starting you on your, watch this, watch this. I'm about to meddle. I'm a meddler. I see folk in here. Well, I heard <laughs> that when the jukebox plays at the VFW, they'll sing every song. I'm not, I'm just saying what I'm saying. Dance every song, but won't budge in the house of God. <laughs> if that ain't you, Go ahead and stand and bless God's name. If that is you, go ahead and stand and bless his name because his mercy endures to all generations. Okay, disclaimer. Full disclaimer. Full disclaimer. I am not throwing shade at those who go to the VFW. One of the only reasons I don't go, because if I go, everybody will be talking about it in church on Sunday. I, 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 listen to me, listen to me. I love the temptations. I got temptation step down. My wife and I, we do temptation step and we, listen, she camel walks. That's before my time, but she camel walks. But how many know that only what you do for the Lord will last? Go ahead and bless his name. He died. I said he died on a hill called Calvary. Took nails in his hands, nails in his feet. Died on Friday. But early Sunday morning, got up with all power. You ought to bless his name. Don't, don't put off, don't put off for tomorrow what you should do today. Flight 2023 is circling the airport. Flight 2023 is preparing to land. But don't let flight 2023 land in 2024 and you still trying to carry the same baggage that held you down in 2023. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, all the things you need, he will provide for you. Go ahead and bless the Lord now. The doors of the church are open. Doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. I need to do this. Lord kept us from January all the way to December. You have to know 
he didn't keep us just because he didn't have nothing better to do. He kept us for a reason. He kept us for a purpose, not only to save us, but so that he can use us to be a witness and a testimony in these last and evil days. Trust me when I tell you, listen, as turbulent as 2023 has been, 2024 is going to be just as turbulent, if not more. We see crazy things going in, going on in our politics, protests, and divide all over the land. Parents killing their children, children killing their parents, shooting up schools, shooting up churches. It's just a matter of time. If it hasn't come to your door, it's just a matter of time that it'll stop by your house. And listen, you can't fight off what's coming by keeping a weapon in your closet. You need the Lord. I'm telling you, you need the Lord. You need the word of God. You need prayer. Don't put off for tomorrow what you should do today. If you don't know Jesus, don't put off for 2024 what you should do today. If you're online and you don't know Jesus, come to Jesus now. While the blood is running warm in your veins. It's simple. It ain't hard. It's hard if you don't want them. But it's simple. Admit you're a sinner. Believe Jesus is the only remedy for sin. Confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you shall be saved. Listen to me. Listen to me. He will forgive you for all the mess. For all the madness. For all the dumb stuff you. I'm a witness. ask you to come this church is called to be a lighthouse in a dark and dying world we're a lighthouse we need to let our light so shine for men before this world that they may see our good works and give God the glory the honor and the praise You think, listen, thank you, woman. We think we got like all the time in the world. There are people that died this week. We're preparing to celebrate New Year's. And they didn't make it out of this year. Truth be told, all right now. He says he almost died last night. Truth be told, every last one of us is a breath away from death. And so don't put off for tomorrow what you should do today. This is part one. We're we, we, we gonna, we gonna circle the airport. We're gonna land this plane tonight if the Lord let us live. Dear Father in heaven, dear Father in heaven, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for loving us in spite of us. We, we act like, like, we act like we got this figured out. We're too foolish to know that while we're trying to figure it out, you already got it worked out. And all we need to do is, is walk. We need to just walk, Father, into your will for our lives. Pray to be in here that don't know you in the pardon of their sin. Father, don't let them leave out of this year without knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior. That they would admit they're a sinner, believe Jesus is the remedy for sin, confess Jesus as Lord and Savior that they might have everlasting life. 
Father, there's a lot of things we could have done better. A lot of things we should have done better. Thank you, Father, that you don't hold our past against us. But just like that prodigal son, you take us from where we are and you move us forward. Let us understand, Father, that without you, we can do nothing. Let us also understand, Father, you didn't save us to sit. You saved us to serve as we make our way from earth to glory. And we don't know how much time we have left. That, that some of us standing here right now have heart condition. And we think it's the medicine and the pacemakers keeping us going. But Father, it's you that's keeping us going. Some of us here think we're, some of us think we're in the best of health and we don't have nothing to worry about. And all it takes is for a second for our health to change. Some of us think that, that, that we, we, we got so much intelligence that we're so smart. It doesn't take for a second for us to lose our mind. In fact, you are the one that has been keeping us in our right mind. Oh Lord, have your way now. Help us, Father, to quit playing with this thing yes. and understand the importance of not only knowing you and the pardon of our sin, but telling others about a Savior who can save them from anything if they put their trust in Jesus. Have your way now, Father, as we come into this last Sunday of this year, last month of this year, last day of this year father we don't hold back anything today waiting for tonight because we know we may not make it to tonight but right now we give you our best praise we clap our hands and we thank you and then we pray father we pray father as this flight continues to circle the airport before we land into the new year if it's your will we pray father that as we close out our service tonight that you would show up and show out as we bless your name for the marvelous things you have done again we clap our hands again we say thank you and as we leave this place but not your presence watch over us take us to our destiny and safety We'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen. amen. Right from where you're standing. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power henceforth and forevermore. And they all sang together. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you tonight. We'll see you tonight. Uh, can I... Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Can I have your attention? Time out. Can I have your attention before we leave? I just want to go over this real quick as far as tonight. Tonight, so the program's going to start at 10. We're going to close out at 12. It's going to be a prayer service. So we have various topics, uh, eight, in fact, that we're going to pray about. There's people assigned to do those prayers. But we all want you to come out and we're going to all pray together. We want to pray together. Family that prays together, someone says stays together. So we want to come out and pray. Those, I know some of you can't make it, but we are going to be live streaming. But just tune into this service, be at this service, so that we can pray out this year and give God the glory in the process. <laughs>